I'm Chris, this is the Salty Trip Channel, and today we are going to show you how we can update the firmware of our MultiPlus 2 with using our phone. So if you want to see how that's done, stick around, check it out. I'm assuming that you already have a Serbo GX and you have internet in your RV and it's already connected together and you've connected to the, the portal which allows you to download the Victron Connect app and lets you monitor your system with your phone. And it also allows you to update the software and your different components on your phone. But I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how we're gonna do this. And then we're gonna just double check all the settings with the computer and I'll show you what you're gonna need for that. And if you have a MultiPlus 2, you're gonna need this stuff anyway, whether you uh, do it portal or not so you may want to stick around and check that out all right guys so you go on open up your uh vrm connect app and then you first thing you do is you go to the, the top corner up there you go to device list click on device list there's our devices it's the servo gx there at the top your multi plus and then our link shut so and then you'll see the uh, remote ve co configuration and then down here you'll see firmware update and you'll just click firmware update and it's just going to take a minute to it's going to check the systems and see what what we have it'll see what versions on what and what needs to be updated just give it a second it doesn't take too long just waiting for a ping reply making sure devices are switched on and connected properly which they all are but okay here we go and the top one says link shunt and then right below it is the servo gx and then right below that is the multi plus two we're going to go over here, scroll over, and it's going to tell you the install version. And then right next to it, it's going to tell you the latest version. And then as you can see, the Multi Plus 2 has an update device. And uh, I, I've gone through, it's the same process I've gone through with the other one. You just click update device. It's going to tell you that, you know, you're, it's going to power down. Well, first it's going to download all the information that you need. And then it's going to uh, power down, so you're going to lose... 120 volt power to your RV in the meantime, but you know, we still have power to Serbo GX because of the batteries and all that stuff and to the uh, Multi plus two. Hit okay And there's also saying the thing if you have a PV inverters to shut those off We don't have solar or nothing like that. So I had to understand confirm and then Confirm this the GX uh, device is not powered by the inverter Which is not see the power the servo GX comes from the distributor over here, which is powered by the batteries, so you don't have to worry about that. But like if you have that somehow plugged into like an outlet or something, your servo GX is plugged into an outlet, then um, yeah, that would be a problem because then it'll shut down, it'll lose power. Let's hit confirm, and that gives you another warning about um, BMS and digital multi uh, controller specifics. I think it just means, uh, if I read this correctly, I think if you have like more than one connected at a time, uh, you only want to do one at a time and it basically says if like you have two of these disconnect one of them confirm be aware in case some cases something goes wrong however unlikely it might be necessary to send someone on site to restore the system let's hope that doesn't happen all right hit confirm it is updating downloading firmware repairing firmware upstate installation Hopefully everything goes smoothly. Cross your fingers, guys. This is the first time I've updated it this way. But you you can update it using your computer, connecting with your MK3 device. But the funny thing is, when I tried to do that, it was saying my firmware was up to date. But then when you connect it to the VRM, it was saying it was out of date. And the latest one is of 508. So I called one of the Victron distributors, and they said... Yes, the 508 is the latest update. I don't know why it's not showing when you connected to the computer on there and it's saying it's up to date, so I'm not sure why. But uh, they said go ahead and try it through the VRM to update it. So like I said, I tried that first. That does not give me the latest firmware. So just, you know, if you have the VRM, double check it through there. But they said it would be okay to run on the, four, the 504, but um, I just want to make sure I had the latest update so that Hopefully everything's running the smoothest. See, it just kind of clicked off. Preparing firmware update, migrating settings. Hopefully it won't change any of the settings. It took a, about a minute and a half. Lights started kicking on. 
So it's kicking back on, it's inverting right now. So we should have power to everything inside. It's gonna take a minute for the internet to connect back. All right, it's cycled through. So we're gonna go back to our VRM, internet's back on. And we are going to back device list, firmware update. It's gonna check it again. Success, system has been successfully updated, now switching off and awaiting configuration. I guess that's what it already did, but now, all right, so we're scanning for firmware update. Now we're gonna go through and seeing everything is up to date, version 508. Um, everything appears to be fine. So what we're gonna do right now real quick is we're going to go onto the computer and double check the settings, make sure the charge rate is, cause you can only change the charge rate on your computer connected directly to the Multi Plus 2. Uh, you can't do it through Servo GX, which I think is stupid. If it's connected to the Servo GX, you should be able to do everything on here that you can do. You should be able to do it on your uh, Touch 70 or Touch 50, whatever that you have, or your app, which you do on here. But that's the way they have it. So we're going to go double check. All you have to do is uh, your Ethernet cable. You just have to unplug it from here. And then plug it into this uh, MK3 USB adapter. And then we'll plug that into our laptop. Open this up, Victron Connect app, but see it's got a 30 amp um, limiter on it right now, which is not right. We're gonna have to redo these settings. So enable settings, it's gonna ask you for the password. Usually it's just ZZZ, hit okay. We're gonna go to general, AC input is 50 amp, so we're going to type in 50, hit OK, so it's going to be a 50 amp, and now, see, now it's reading correctly. It was reading that as a 30 amp input, and now that corrected itself. We'll go here to charger, see it reset to 70 amps. For each one of our batteries, it's saying it should only charge at 40 amps per battery. So we have three of those, so we can charge up to 120 amps. But we have another, we're gonna put another inverter in, so we're going to put this to 60, so that when the other one connects, that'll be 120. We have to go back and click on lithium battery, saying that, hey, this is not an AGM or lead acid, basically, and that will, change a lot of the settings automatically for you. If you know your exact settings, you can go in there and change them yourself. But we, I just click on lithium batteries and kind of left alone and it pretty much figures it out for itself. Been done a pretty good job, so I'm not gonna mess with it. We are up to date. All right guys, so that's how you update your firmware using your VRM on your phone. And it's pretty simple. We didn't run into any issues. Um, it was pretty much as expected. It just took a minute to recycle over. We did have to get on the computer and change back the, the, the charge rate settings that, that we want to. It'll automatically go to 70. We did have to go back to the, the limiter and set it back to 50 amps and then switch it back. So it recognized it as lithium batteries. So we're charging lithium batteries and the charge rate and everything's fine. Uh, other than that, everything went smooth. If you got something out of this, uh, please give this video a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And if you want to follow us on the rest of our build as we go, or if you want to see how we put all this together, uh, you can go back. We have a playlist of all the our build from, from scratch, how we installed everything, wiring, every nut and bolt in here. So if you want to check that out, uh, go down to our, our Victron Power playlist, and it'll show you all that stuff. And hit that subscribe button if you want to follow us because we don't have soul yet it's coming and we're going to continue on this build so till we see you guys next week bye